We're going to take some questions here on Mavericks today after Clay Thompson chooses the Dallas Mavericks on a three-year $50 million contract via sign and trade. Uh, if you have questions about who they could sign next, other trades, whatever you got, throw it at us. Harrison Graham, Jeff Cooperstein are ready to go. We'll get to the Super Chat first. Got another one coming in as well. Jamie, now time to get off the maxi money, even if it costs you Jaden Hardy. I disagree, Coop. Agreed. Because regardless of how I feel about Maxi, he's a versatile defender. He yep. can play on the perimeter on switches. That's valuable. And when healthy, he could still be a streaky shooter. It's very come and go, but he's still capable. And I, if it's if it's Jaden Hardy and Kleba gone or both here, I'd rather them both be here because I think Hardy could potentially be ready for a much bigger role next year, especially with Tim Hardaway Jr. off this team. Yeah, I don't think Maxi Kleba is going to go anywhere at this point now. I think the Mavs have kind of made their major move as far as signing Clay Thompson with the trades go, and I don't see them moving Maxi in another deal. So I think he's on the roster, and Hardy will be on the roster too. I don't think the Mavs are moving on from Maxi Kleba. And, and you think where Maxi is, he's got two years left. I kind of feel like he's in the Tim range. Yeah. He'll be here this year, and depending how it goes next year, you could look to unload him. Yeah, so. especially with yeah the two years left on his deal at about $11 million. It's a very affordable contract, so Maxi will be on this team next year, I think. Let's go to Logan. Do we get a backup center? Always could use a backup. Uh, you have two we have three centers on the roster. You have Derek Lively, Daniel Gafford. Now, a name uh, we were just spitballing live who can play some center, can play some four, Precious Achua. I wouldn't mind. He's a good defender, Coop. He can switch under the perimeter and play out there a little bit. So I wouldn't mind him as like a 4-5 hybrid because, look, Dwight Powell might be the new Markeith Morris on this team where he's just, not he's just hanging him. out. Yeah, like seriously. So whereas Achua can actually play, and let's be honest, Kleb is going to miss time. <laughs> he just is. So uh, I would not mind a guy who could play some four who could also give you some small ball five and Achua – uh, could be that guy, and there was chatter he could be in that biannual range, which is just under 5 mil, and the Mavs have 4.4 million left on their mid-level, so maybe that could work out. You know you're doing something right when the haters have already come around. The four, $5 super chat from Jules saying 0 for 10. He went 0 for 10. He's also the second greatest shooter in NBA history. I got four, four titles. Yeah, how about that, um, Jules? Yeah, that was obviously an ugly showing, but uh, when you're a shooter, you're going to have those every once in a while, so... Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm sure on a personal note, he, he hates that. That's how his Golden State era ends with that performance. But what it is. I think he has plenty of good memories to go to in the memory well uh, to, to remember his time there. Unitive, are the Mavs favorites to come out of the West after signing Clay? I would lean OKC because the biggest reason the Mavericks beat the Thunder, in my opinion, were that, that they, they were able to bully Chet. Like Gafford yeah, no and doubt. Lively had a lob after lob after lob, offense rebound. Not that Chet didn't have a good series, but with them getting Isaiah Hartenstein, albeit an overpay, Chet can roam the perimeter more, be more of that finesse offensive player that he is. Uh, they can also still play him at the five in certain lineups, but I would give OKC the slight edge, and I think Dallas is right there after that, along with Minnesota, Denver. But Denver lost KCP. They've lost two key contributors two off seasons in a row and haven't really replaced them. Like, yes, they have. If Denver doesn't make another move, Coop, like I don't know if they have enough ammunition. That that roster is kind of thin. They're very top heavy right now. As we're filming this on Monday, on Monday, we just have some reporting coming out. Mark Stein says Clay Thompson had face to face meetings with both the Lakers and the Mavericks in LA on Sunday night. He chose the Dallas Mavericks, obviously, and Kyrie Irving was there to counter recruiting for LeBron James. How cool is that? Kyrie, man, he's uh, he's been everything and more that even like whatever you thought the best case scenario was, he's probably topped that. Now I know he didn't have a great finals and stuff like that, but like, a, I didn't know if he'd fit on the court. He's fit pretty well. B, I had major concerns, and there was a track record of him being just a flake and misfit off the court. And he's been great, man. Give Kyrie a lot of credit. There's there's no doubt. Nate with the super. What's your confidence in Clay's first three from Luca? Like, who's gonna assist his first three? Uh, or, it's probably him. Or what's like the first look he gets on a Luca pass? Uh, pretty confident. I would imagine early on in that first game they're gonna dial up a play for Clay. So, uh, look, I think he's gonna be a forty-plus percent three-point guy here in Dallas. Uh, I think he's they're gonna generate a ton of good looks for him. 
This is an interesting one from the Kang. Chetty Osman or Danilo Gallinari? Chetty Osman has some positional versatility. Shot, I think, 38% from three last year. Gallinari's kind of cooked. Like I, He's had a lot of injuries, too, so... I'm not that interested in him. Jetty's a little bit better of a defender, so I would lean him over Gallo. But uh, with that $4.4 million left in the mid-level, I would like to sign someone who can give you some positional versatility on the defensive end. That, that would be my preference there. Who should the Mavs sign next? Let us know down in the comments. Should it be a guy like Chetty Osman? Should they go after a guy like Pat Beverly? They still have plenty of options, about a four and a half million to play with on that mid-level exception. So let us know what you guys think. I about. wanted Nick Batum, but he signed with the Clippers. I think he would have been a great fit. He's but back. Uh, there, uh, there are some other guys uh, still out there. J.O., so the only player we are using is Josh Green. That is correct. That is correct. Uh, if you're watching live right now, the only thing that has to get finalized is uh, what pick compensation is going to Golden State. The Mavs got two seconds back from Charlotte. Uh, for Josh Green, Woj reports that one of those could go to the Warriors, which could finalize the trade. So it doesn't sound like it's going to be much going back to Golden State. Did they keep any more funds? This one from Fit Old, Fit Old Fart. Interesting. I, th I think you mean point of attack defender. Yeah, or point of contact. Yeah, like I said, that four point four million. There's some some quality defenders uh, still out there now. What are the chances you're going to find a Derek Jones with that? Probably not. Well, you already got Najee Marshall. Like He's your Jones replacement. Yeah. Now, Marshall isn't going to defend guards at the level Jones can, but he can play bigger. He can play uh, bigger wings. So, I mean, you're going to have that going for you as well. Uh, but uh, there, there's still guys out there that you, could, uh, that you could bring in, no question. This is an interesting one from NBA fan. Do we have the biannual exception? You Negative. You do not. Because Quentin Grimes is going into that. So the Tim Hardaway for Quentin Grimes trade, Grimes is going into the biannual exception, which will create the $16 million trade exception that will in turn be sent to the Golden State Warriors for Clay Thompson. Exactly. Appreciate the question, NBA fan. Hashtag Mavs or Super Chat. Um, this is a good one. Uh, another one from our guy Nate. What level of Clay makes this deal worthy? Five out of 10? Oh, like if 10 like out of 10 is Pete Clay. If he is at least what he was last year for two of the four years, like if that's like the baseline, I still think it's worth it because you didn't – you paid him less than 17 a year. I think he'll play better than he played last year. I hope He so. seems pretty motivated. Now, he's not going to all of a sudden get athleticism back, but I think he can re-engage what, – what, what did Jason Kidd – what has he done really well? He's gotten players to buy in defensively. Yep. So – I think at least the effort will be better from Clay on that end than it was last year. He was pretty checked out. If he continues to be a 38-plus, ideally 40-plus three-point shooter um, and plays a little bit better defense, then I, that's kind of all you need him to be. That's You paid him 17 a year. That's not like – you're not expecting like an all-NBA player. That's exactly. not what that contract commands in this NBA. So – you just need a really good – you need a solid player. Like, that that's what you need. I know it's kind of a lot of words to say not a ton, but, like, you just don't need him to be bad. Like, kind of be what you were last year, hopefully a little better, and that's kind of what you paid for. So And that, and that deal is worth it. Thank be, you, guys. Be a lot better than Tim Hardaway, who was making similar money. A massive upgrade. That there. seems pretty easy to do. Absolutely. We appreciate it, each and every one of you for getting your questions in. When the Mavericks make a move, we will have it covered. So please be sure to hit that subscribe button. And we'll see you soon here on Mavericks Today with some more content.